Well, now welcome back, folks. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. So I managed to get uh, four of these jacks. I have to go find two more in the morning, if I can. This is on a Saturday, so I don't know if I'll be able to find two more on a Sunday. Uh, yeah, so I ended up finding two of those style and two of these style right here. And uh, yes, I can leave them up on these four jacks. So I have to find two more in the morning for the far end. And I'll show you why. So I have this one here. This one's on the tongue. Now I put one here, one on the far side. And when they're flipped up, they do not get in the way of the mill whatsoever, which is good. And that goes there. So I got the square tubing. So what I was gonna do is build the outrigger style. I was getting all set to weld this in, this square tubing, but I'm not going to now. Sorry if that's loud. I'm gonna fix that hole there on either side. I don't even have to fix it, but I, I, I will though. I'll just make it look a little better. I'll fix that and I will I will cut these off. Don't need those on there, the old stake pockets from the old, when this was a trailer, when I use it for getting logs out. I will weld my jacks on either side. They can stay here. And then this axle, I'm going to put an axle right here. I'm going to I'm going to do that square tubing there. I'm going to leave it there all right. But I'm going to put one right here. Right in here somewhere. Just out of the way. So we'll have it. Oh, about three quarters of the way back or so. I'll put it right, right there somewhere. Man, this thing keeps focusing on my hand. And I do not know why. Let's try this. Yeah, so I'm going to put it right there. That's where it's going to go. Right down there. I think it'll be a lot better than right. I, I didn't put it in the middle. I put it back a little bit from the center. But then I'm going to take that. I'm going to put that because I have that tubing right there. I'm going to put it right here. Now the wheels are at the lowest point right now. So I was going to test it, see if I could move it in here. But at the lowest point, I can take those jacks and they will swivel around. And I can lift this mill right up, pull the axles out and turn them. And it goes high enough to set them no problem the way you would tow it down the highway. So two more jacks like that, I say, and we'll be gold. And we tested it. It works great. I love it. So that way, once we get this put under the, once we get this where it's supposed to be, then we can leave it sit right on the jacks, right on the jack stands. I will set it down to the lowest position and that will be great. I think that'll be golden. Yeah, so that's what we've been up to today. And I'll show you this side here. Oh, Heather and I, we just came back from blueberry picking. The blueberries are phenomenal, man. It is unbelievable how good they are this year. Love it. So that's this one welded on here. Did this one, did the other side, like I say, I just got to go find two more for down there. These pin and come off. You just pull a pin and they come off. These are actually cheaper than this style. These weren't even that expensive either though, but still. Now I will eventually cut this off too. And we are going to, yeah. So we've been doing other stuff here. We want to get back to this, but we've got other things to do first. We really had to go at some other stuff first. But anyways, this is working out great. So I put the level here. It is so nice to be able to have a level here. And just crank it with us instead of trying to stick a i was using a car jack to put under there to lift it up and oh, i was stupid but now we have an axle under there we don't have to it'll be just like a normal mill i have to finish welding up the chute i'm going to cut it back a little wee bit see the thing is it's too it sits too low to be able to hang a five gallon pail on there i know a lot of people keep saying hang a five gallon pail on there but it sits too low to the ground to put a five gallon pail on there now if i lift it much higher then it's going to hit the roof up there. So I can't do that. I have to take the mill and have to move that way. Oh, sorry, Katie, I didn't see you there. Didn't mean to back in, didn't mean to bang into you. She's all friendly. Yeah, so I'm going to cut that chute back a little bit maybe and, and point it down a little bit. And I'll try to hang a pail there. I'll hang a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, like a, some kind of a sock, like a, burlap bag or something or a feed bag we have and I'll just run that in so, so it helps dissipate the sawdust so it doesn't blow back out. I think that's what I will do. 
later on. But we're slowly getting her. And yes, it is leaning this way because it's lower over there. So that's why it is leaning like that. So that's why it does look like it's leaned because it is. That side is lower. So from this building, it slopes down away. So that's why it looks like that. Other than that, we've been doing good. We just had to do a few things for the last few days. That's why we didn't get back to this. And uh, then I was able to go get these, these jacks. So I was working. I did, I cut these holes in here on both ends. I was getting ready to weld in this square tube and I thought, well, let me go price these jacks. And I priced these jacks and they weren't actually that bad. So I got those. So I just need to get two more now and that will be, if I can find them, two more. So I had to get these two at one place. So these two came from good old Canadian Tire, which they don't just sell tires there for you folks who don't know that. They sell a lot. Of, it's like a hardware store type thing, but they also have tires and they have a garage and whatnot. So we got those at Canadian Tire. And these here we had to get at a place called Ebert Welding. They uh, sell this kind of stuff plus Ford tractors. And, uh, actually, what is it now? It's not called Ford now, right? It's called New Holland. Is that right? Ah, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure. So, that's what we've been up to. Great. I want to give a big shout out to, if he's listening as well, to Joey Barnes. And uh, uh, he, I believe it's his daughter there too. Joey Barnes, if you ever get bored and you want to see some cool old vehicles and stuff, check out the king, I think it's uh, the king of obsolete. Yeah, he's in northern Manitoba, I believe. But he's got some really cool stuff there, folks. If you're into older trucks and cars, give him a, a look-see and tell him uh, Cecil said to say hi. I think he was on the series Ice Road Truckers, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. So, King of Obsolete, Joey Barnes. He sells his books, too, on Amazon, too, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. So, pretty good fella. I believe he's a pretty good fella. I like watching his stuff. I like watching his content. I watch it quite a bit. So that's how that's looking. And it is a bit of a mess in here because we've been doing a lot of stuff. I got some welding rods I've been picking through because those welding rods are shot. Man, I don't know if somebody soaked them in oil before I got them. They were freebies. They were gift to me about three, four years ago, but I'm pretty sure that's hydraulic oil on them that's leaked. <laughs> or some kind of oil and they give them to me. So when I weld, they take fire. I'm not supposed to do that. Welding rods are not supposed to be flammable. Just like oxygen is not flammable, you're not going to light oxygen on fire. Oxygen helps things burn better. That's why you always shut the acetylene off and then you leave your oxygen going because it dies out. If oxygen burned, then you would need acetylene. So it's always, when you shut your torches down, it's A before O or up you go. Because back in the day, your acetylene could burn back up through the nozzle if you shut your oxygen off first to burn up through the nozzle and potentially get to the tank. But now they have uh, these little these little uh, uh, shut off things in the hose. So, but yeah, oxygen does not burn. It drives me nuts when I see a show and they go, oh, don't smoke around oxygen, you're gonna blow up. Man, if oxygen burned, gee, what we're breathing in would take fire. So that's that's a big myth. Acetylene, like oxygen bottles are under pressure, so you don't want to slam the lid. You don't want to knock the top off because it's under pressure. But it's not going to burn. It is. It does help fires burn better, though. So if you're smoking and you have oxygen near you, that's not a good thing. Because if you drop a spark and it takes fire, that oxygen is help, going to help feed that really good. And it's going to burn really clean. But you can take a lighter and light it in front of an oxygen tank when, it, when the oxygen is coming out. And it's not going to do anything. Trust me. I did enough welding, and any of you folks know that too. When you are, when you're using a torch, you know you have to turn the acetylene on first, then the oxygen, because you cannot light oxygen on fire. It drives me nuts when I see that in a show. But hey, whatever. Yeah. So that's what we've been up to today. I'm just working at this, doing other stuff. Heather mowed the grass really nice. I got a few other goodies dropped off too, but anyways, uh, Heather did the, the lawn and it is working really good. Oh, I got to put this underneath. So I used to use, I used to use Argo Shield on this for welding. 
And then I was getting it was called Fer Feraline. Fer yeah, Feraline. I didn't care much for that gas. So now the stuff I get is called, it comes from PV Mart. I just switched my bottles. It's less expensive too, and it's called Auto Weld. Whatever. But this gas seems to, to do a lot nicer welds than the, the Feraline. Fer I don't know if it's different or not. I don't know if the mixture is different, but anyway, I'm going to push this under the roof here before, just in case it rains tonight, I don't want to get my, I don't want to get my little welder wet. So tomorrow, I think what we're going to do, like I say, is we're going to go find some, two more jacks if we can. Tomorrow's Sunday, so I don't know if we're going to be able to find them, but two more jacks, weld them on, clean this up, take it outside, get ready to paint it. That's what we're up to. I think we're going to go probably a nice orange. Orange. If I have some orange paint. Certainly not going to go... Well, I won't be ready to paint it tomorrow. I know that. We still got to clean this all up. And, uh, yeah. And thanks, Bert, again, too. I'm not sure what you are sending, but thank you very much. I've been meaning to... Get, I just seen that a little while ago when I was in the house. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Not sure what it is yet, Bert. <laughs> it doesn't tell me what it is through the email, but thank you very much. I'm, I, I, yeah, I don't have a clue what you're sending, but we really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Bert. Oh, I can hear the chickens squawking. Something's going on. Anyways, I'm not going to bore you too much with this, folks. I just wanted to show you what we've been up to here and why we haven't been milling, but. Very shortly, we're going to get back to this milling, but we've really been trying to harvest some blueberries and Saskatoon berries. So we have, we're filling up our freezers with that. We're filling them up with the blueberries, man. They are large this year. They got to be the size of my, my finger there, or let me see here. They are probably the size of that finger. Yeah. Mm, you can't see it. It's not the middle finger I'm giving you, by the way, folks. So yeah, they're, they're about... Not the smallest finger, but my second smallest finger. That's how big the berries are in there. Yeah, they're pretty big. And there is lots of them. They're hanging like grapes. Yeah. Yeah, so we have to go a little ways, but it's not too bad. They're not right at our place here. So, yeah, they're not down our road. So, you're not going to find too much down our road. But, they're not too far away. So, we've been filling our freezer with those. I don't know how much we got, maybe close to five gallons now, I guess. I'm not sure. Yeah, about, about five gallons, I guess. So that's a lot of berries for the winter. Goes good in the morning with uh, pancakes. How to make uh, pancakes, flapjacks, whatever you want to call them. I don't know if there's a difference. Probably is. I don't know. I'm not I'm not that edumacated. But uh, anyways, Heather puts them in our pancakes in the morning. We have some real maple syrup on them, and uh, it's good with the blueberries in there. Very shortly, the raspberries will be ready too to pick, so we'll pick those as well, and we'll be filling the freezer with that. It's good, and I'm still still losing weight. I'm happy. I was uh, I was I was almost I was getting up to 185 last winter, and I am down to 176 in the morning now. So, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Anyway, I'm not going to chat too much. Hope you enjoyed this video, folks. Hey, let me know what you think. It's coming along. I know it's slow, but I'm trying to do it right. I'm going to cut all these off, too. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to try to cut all those off. Clean her up a bit so when you paint it, it looks decent. You folks take care, and you have a great day. Bye-bye, all.